Hello and welcome to the Two Robbies podcast, your destination for in-depth discussion and analysis of the Premier League and the Champions League. I'm Robbie Musto, he's Robbie Earl, and here are today's topics. The Premier League title race is well and truly on after Liverpool close the gap to just one point behind Man City following their victory at the Emirates over Arsenal. Everton's much needed three points against Newcastle despite going down to 10 men. What a game that was. Man United eliminated from the Champions League by Atletico Madrid. Christian Pulisic's goal sealing a place for Chelsea in the quarterfinals and Harry Kane breaking a new record in Spurs' win over Brighton. That's what we got coming up in today's episode. All right, Rob. Uh, yeah. Lots of uh, lots of stuff going on as normal midweek at this time of year, like knockout competitions, rearranged fixtures, of course, in the Premier League. Uh, mm-hmm. for all the kind of COVID uh, postponements earlier in the season. Um, yeah. But let's start with big game. Big game. Litmus oh. test for both Arsenal and Liverpool. Yeah. Liverpool come out top, Rob, at the Emirates 2-0. Mm-hmm. Second half goals mm-hmm. from Diogo Jota and Roberto Firmino yeah. on a substitute in the second half. Gets the job done. Um, mm. Guess cracking. What do you want to start with? Wow. What do I want to start with? What I want to start with first, Rob, was the atmosphere at the Emirates. That's what I want to start with. It yeah. was buzzing. It was like the good old days were back at Arsenal. The players, I thought, particularly in the first half, took some of that and, and, and used it on the pitch. Their energy, their intensity, their game plan, the strategy of how they played. We talked about you can start to see those patterns. I thought the first half was much of that. I've got to be honest, Rob, I thought for the first half, there were a handful for Liverpool team that didn't quite get going, that weren't at the very best. But a lot of credit has to go to, to Arsenal. That. And, and, and to that point, Rob, Arsenal fans probably came away disappointed having had so much play, didn't take chances, and we'll talk about those things. But I just thought for 45 minutes, Arsenal fans had a glimpse of what the future could look like. Now, I'm not... Listen, I, and I looked at the two things. Jürgen Klopp, I think he's six to seven years in now. Mikel Arteta's one to two years in now. What are Arsenal going to look like in four or five years with the right support, with the right investment? And if this guy continues to develop this team with the quality that we've seen, I just thought, despite the disappointment of the result, it was a good day for Arsenal. I, I couldn't agree more, Rob. You know, when, when we make our notes on these games, I've got mm. more notes about Arsenal. I've got yeah, more notes. Yeah. You know, I, I, I thought first half, to, to kind of echo your point a little bit, obviously, you know, we have a similar mm. thought on this game. Yeah. Um, that was legit. They were a yeah. better team for 45 yeah. minutes. And I know they're at home, but the whole vibe, mm. the whole feel around the team, the atmosphere, Rob, it's different Absolutely. now. It's so yeah. different. I mean, it has, they have to be the most, the, the, the most improved team of this Premier League season. Sure. And they were the better team in the first half. They're grooved. They're organised. They're confident. They're competitive. Mm. You know, so different to what we see a, a long time ago. You know, and, and I go back to the the thing we've probably mentioned before, the two people that were brought in by the owners here, the Cronkies and the football club, yeah. Edu and Arteta, the two main positions. And I want to retouch mm-hmm. on that, Rob, when we, when we talk Man United a little later, of the two positions that are so yeah. important. And, you know, there's a lot of talk about owners, Rob, a lot of talk about the Cronkies when mm-hmm. things weren't going well. But yeah. if you hire... The, the correct people, the best in class, or whatever you can get for those sport director and the head coach, you've got a chance. And, mm-hmm. and and you're right, Rob. I mean, with more time, you know, maybe some additions in the market, it's hard yeah. to yeah. be in the top four and, and challenge the very best at Liverpool's, you know, one of, of course, the very best. It's hard to compete. So they're going to have to try and move forward. They're going to have to try and bring in more players. But absolutely, it's a time to yeah. sort of, like, particularly the first half, we'll talk about the second half, Rob. It's almost like two separate yeah narrative really yeah. but that first half game mm. i'm looking at it i'm thinking two good teams two good yeah, sides in pressure. absolutely yeah there wasn't a lot created but but mm. like gave as good as they got and looked better and Klopp yeah. was going crazy on the sideline obviously he, he made the adjustments at half time but that mm. first half uh it was like going back many years rob about a yeah. competitive felt, felt a buzz, it? Just, it yeah. yeah um Aggressive. Now, yeah, just, aggressive, creative. Just gone like, that, Rob, and I wanted to make the point of, just do you remember we were working on first game of the season, Brentford and Arsenal, that Arsenal, oh. that Arsenal, no intensity, no drive, lacking responsibility, steel. no real pattern of play. And, you know, if you think from that day to where they were, and, and for 45 yeah. minutes, as you say, 
I thought they were the better team. I thought they were a better team. That, that's progress right mm. there. Well, the front three were quite Rob, and, and that yeah. moves us on to the and onto the second half. And and obviously yeah. Klopp is special. I mean, you know, we've seen this many times now where he's made adjustments, he's revved them up. I'm yeah. sure it's most that of this was minutes of half time is is is, is that yeah. experience right there, isn't it? Yeah, and the penetration, the uh, sorry, the uh, the intensity and the penetration was better for them. Straight away, looking for those through balls in between defenders that we didn't really see in the first half. It must have been a tremendous team talk from him. Um, wasn't it? Wasn't there? There was a big chance, wasn't it? Martin Odegaard chance. Both, both chances were both goalkeepers, Rob. I wanted to touch on this point. I'm glad yeah. you, you managed. Thiago plays a ball back towards yeah. his goal, gets nicked. I think it was Lacazette who sets up Odegaard and Allison comes up with a really big save that goes over the top. About two or three minutes later, Thiago plays one straight into Jogo Jota, who yeah. runs from an angle and beats That's Aaron good. Ramsey in a, in a place I didn't like. As great as he's been, I thought that was a goalkeeper error. Yeah. Just back on the goalies, Rob. And and I put I pointed this out before on one of our shows about Allison's ability to move his feet laterally. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was another example. I mean, he is like so on his good. haunches, isn't he? On his haunches. Yeah, but he stays on his feet. So he gets yeah. his feet moving. He goes to the one side. He then gets back to the other side and makes the, the, the reflex save. It glances yeah. off his arm and goes yeah. over the top. Yeah. I don't think many goalkeepers can do that, Rob. Move so quickly laterally yeah. in, in response to a forward making those moves. So I thought it was a brilliant, I thought it was a brilliant, brilliant save because of that. And I think people... I, you know, I, I urge fans to go back and take a look at that in his feet. And I, and I don't think I've seen another goalkeeper for a long time be so good at moving his feet when the player tried to take it around him. Um, but anyway, I just want to make that point. It was, was excellent. And, and you're right, the near post goal, with, with all that Aaron Ramsdale's done, you expect yeah. him to get that. I, I just thought Liverpool, Rob, they turned up the gas a little bit. Yeah. Of course, they got the subs. Jota scores and comes off and Firmino mm. comes on and scores the second goal. I just thought if I was on the if I was on the show, Rob, or previewing yeah. this game, I would have said interesting game, massive improvement for Arsenal. But I think Liverpool will just have a little bit too much power yeah. for Arsenal. And I, mm. I was probably I would have been wrong in the first half. Yeah, the second, yeah. I thought we mm. saw it. The extra intensity, oh, the power, the, that desire, and they, they found a way to, to get past Arsenal. Yeah, and that, that was my point really of the second half. They did find a way. They had more power. They had the goals. There was a couple of things that stood out to me. The substitution that he made was going to make one nil. He takes the two off. The two come on. It, it's down to the guy again. It, and he's obviously slivers of genius in, in the way that he, he does things, and it they they tend to work out. But there was part of me that thought Rob. What Jurgen Klopp has built is a robust, can do different kind of things to win. Yeah, that was the thing that stood out to me. So, you know, mm. we can play football and beat you 5 0. We can go intense toe to toe and play manic football, like, you know, like the city level, and we see that game. We see a game where they suffered another clean sheet, despite whatever we say. Mm. They get the win. They've got forwards who can get them goals. And I thought there was a great example, Rob, and, and, and again, not a headline maker this year, more of a, hmm, is he really back in their best three forwards? Bobby Firmino, Bobby Bobby, comes on, controls the ball, slightly miscontrols the ball, his reaction to win it back, Rob, in the penalty area is, is mm -hmm. like top draw. He's, he's one of the best de attacking defenders we've seen. And then his positional play, as that play continues as the ball goes wide, Andy Robertson wins it back from Saka. They keep the pressure on, he comes across the line. He tiptoes his way between Gabriel. He shows him, picks one side, goes the other and, and scores the goal. That sums up Bobby Firmino, that sums up Liverpool. The, the craft in the 18-yard box to tiptoe his way to get the goal, but the intensity and the drive to go and win a ball back that, that started. That's what, uh, that's what Liverpool have got. And the key, the, the, the most important thing is the manager understands, I think, when to use him, Rob. When to yeah, use him. The, yeah. subs, the subs in this game, you know, it was old for new. Salah and yeah. Firmino on Jota and, and, and Luis Diaz. I yeah. think Klopp's got a great sense of when to use that new energy. And, and maybe in certain moments, Rob, with experience and that just that know-how, yeah. at certain times, he's going to go back to Firmino. So, of course, we've talked many times about the, the new options now. With Jota yeah. and, and Firmino, 
Um, but at certain times, you may you want to go back to the tried and tested front three that, of, of course, mm. served Liverpool so well. So I just thought Liverpool jumped on the mistakes yeah. that Arsenal made in that second half. And, um, you know, that, that ended up being the difference. Just thinking ahead, Robin, <clears throat> you know, we've talked about how Arsenal have come such a, uh, a distance so far, e yeah. you know, even this one season. Yeah. What is it? I mean, by the way, I love the way they're playing now. Just side note, a little tiny tactical note that you know that I love all that, Rob. I mean, yeah. without the ball, they're a different system. They're four, mm -hmm. two back to yeah. four, four, four and then then, yeah. two. Odegaard. So that's their one shape. And then when they have the ball, I'd love to show do this on the on the line. Yeah, we'll go on the tactics. Next system. time we're on the, uh, yeah. on the show. Yeah. And then when they have the ball, it kind of turns into this diamond where they go from, yeah. they, they kind of change into to, uh, yeah. three, three a little bit, like as it yeah. drops. And, yeah. and and Xhaka goes one Xhaka way. Xhaka goes one side. It's kind of unusual. And I'm, and I'm only mm. saying it because it's kind of unusual. Yeah. Um, but they're, they're really grooved in it now and it works pretty well. And yeah. uh, everybody's just, comfortable. It, everyone's comfortable and they what they're doing, both with and without the ball. Yeah. Um, what what do Arsenal, what areas do they need to to, to improve? To, I mean, it's going to take time, by the way, maybe money, but what, what areas could they get better? Take Jogo Jota, stick him in the top of Arsenal's team, boom, we, we, we're flying. Yeah. Lovely Striker. player, yeah. gets goals, can head, can score, can join in. A better version of, 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 of Lacazette. I thought Thomas Party is coming into the form yes. that we thought, looking more like the player. Granite mm. Jacker will be divisive. I still think he has a role to play, Rob. There's, there's something about him. I, I think could, he could be a spot has... there, Rob, couldn't it? Couldn't that be a spot that where they... could be an improving. If we're talking about their improvement, that could be that that could be an upgrade. Tommy Asu, we've mm. seen. Cedric's done a decent job in Tierney. I mean, at some point, I like the White and, 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 and Gabriel at the moment, but, you know, if we're talking that very next level... They've got to grow. They've got to grow, yeah, haven't they? I agree. Got to wait and see. And I think Artata is going to give them the time to grow. Um, so maybe even a young one or somebody who can back them up before, you know, as you see, like with the Chelsea's of the world where they've got a couple of young players, they've got some experience. Maybe, you know, what Liverpool have done over the last two or three years, Rob, has bought that squad out. You know, and that might be part of what Mikel Ortiz is going to have to do, bulk his squad out now. He's pretty bare, really, when you think what they've done with loans and people selling and get mm -hmm. people out of, out of the football club. Yeah. So... You know, yeah. the right ones at the right time with the right profile that fills that squad. And, and like I said, I think we talked about it, may still be part of that in, in terms of numbers, but I'm not sure as, as much the main nine, is he going to get enough goals? Is he going to be quite at the level you want if we're talking about getting towards the top of the table? Just the last thing I'll say on Arsenal, and I mm -hmm. agree with some of that, I think I think a, a number eight, a box-to-box -box midfield player with an eye for goal that can play a little bit would be good. I mean, the best thing about Arsenal really is these young players. You yeah. know, Martinelli, Smith Rowe, um, Odegaard, and uh, Bakara Saka, Rob. I mean, young, creative talent mm -hmm. that, are, that are learning and growing every minute they play in the Premier League. And they've had a whole season of, of being used to playing at the Emirates with the intensity and the way that it's just. Didn't look phased, did he, anymore? Don't look phased like, no. you know, Martinelli looked like he was enjoying running at Trent as much as yeah. Jordan Clock can yeah, tell yeah. me about Trent defending. Martinelli yeah. was, you know, gave him plenty of problems with his movement and that. So, yeah. Um, defeat mm. for Arsenal, but plenty to take away from that. Liverpool closed the gap um, to a point. And that was courtesy of a nil nil duel at um, Crystal Palace. That was Manchester City going to uh, Sellers Park. Um, mm. And it was a day, Rob, when all the, I'm sure the media were going, was it a day you didn't have a number nine, Pep? Is this a day the false? I mean, everybody will go to that narrative. Listen, I wrote down, this is the question they're going to ask on two or three occasions because of the other 35 games that they've played. It doesn't it, it doesn't count. Um, is it as simple as being a centre-forward? Did he create enough chances, Rob, to have done it? Bernardo Silva, in particular, I thought was a good chance. He had two good chances, really. The one that he doesn't connect, the one he tries to go back to the goalie. A, a few bad decisions from City in the last third maybe cost them. Listen, they had a couple of brilliant chances, Rob. And sometimes, you know, away games, Palace are a different team. They're a different yeah. animal. I mean, they're, they're so confident and and they've got, you know, a bit of swagger at home. The fans yeah. are believing in the team. They were tough nut to crack. Yeah. But I thought the Bernardo Silva first chance where he's popped out from the goalkeeper. And keeper, just yeah. Got yeah. it to be a little bit too cute. The second one maybe was a little harder. Listen, I'm I'm the one, my friend, that said at the start of the season yeah. that, that they, and by the way, I am not, I am not, Hear me out. 
I said that centre forward might end up costing the team the title because they might struggle to score. I was, I, I've been proved wrong. I'm not going to jump on that in this game, Rob. Yeah. They've scored so many goals, they look so good. The team is set up in a different way that, that utilises midfield players to get forward yeah. and score goals. They figured that out. This wasn't about that. I ain't going to jump back on, oh, I told you. No, because they've yeah. done it and they've scored yeah. a ton of goals. This was what, and they created chances to win the game. And yeah, I, 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 yeah so listen, you know, people will, will jump on it to, to the chagrin, I'm sure, of Pep Guardiola. The team has been brilliant this year without yeah. a number nine. Uh, it's just one of those days where they had a couple of great chances, didn't take them. It's nil nil. They dropped points. Liverpool now, with the victory yeah. we just talked about, Rob, are one point behind. Obviously, we've got a brilliant, brilliant championship race. Yeah. Marvellous. What we all I mean, wanted long this, time. This ago. game in uh, April 9th or 10th, whichever one it ends well, up being, uh, is could be all it, Rob, the, the way they're going, because both of them ain't going to drop too many more points. We know that City ain't going to go on, on a particularly poor run. I mean, this, the, the stats back you up as well. I was looking at the game. 19 shots for Man City, 7 shots for Palace, 14 of those from open play. So they've dominated the ball. They've had the chances. They haven't took them. Yeah. Just a couple of points of interest. Obviously, we, things tighten up, whether... Mentally, it will have any effect on, on this city group. Listen, they've won titles, they've won back to back titles. Um, the other thought was, Robin, and it is coming out of Germany and Plessy, that Erlen Haaland has decided where he wants to end up. Could that be the blue of Man City? Could he be could, that could guy? Be. Could, could be. Yeah. I mean, listen, it's a whole podcast, mate, about the money that Man City spend. Hmm. And, and get away with spending. I mean, they didn't get Kane. Uh, I mean, the amount of money that, that listen, they, they've they've been challenged twice on financial fair play, and they've they've got through. And, and and there was kind of minor things they did wrong, but they weren't. I just I'm astonished they keep they can keep spending crazy amounts of money, Rob. And, and I know there's a buyout clause, and maybe it wouldn't be as much as you'd expect. Um, but yeah, you know that's the reports we heard. Mm. I mean, I. Thought something about Man United the other day. I mean, until yeah. it happened. I think yeah. I think it's going to be everybody's interest, Rob, to tell, to, to explain or to make his decision. So his yeah. club knows. Yeah. 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 Um, but yeah, I mean, that that's that sounds like it's... I, I thought it was between Man City and uh, Real, Real Madrid. Madrid. Killing Mbappe, of course, is probably going to be their number one target if they get Mbappe. Yeah. Then probably, I'm sure they can't afford to bring in uh, Erlen Haaland as well. So, mm. yeah. Like that would be scary for the for, but for the rest that's of the league. Yeah. I mean, he's going to and and hit the ground running and banging loads of goals like he does in the Bundesliga. Nothing yeah. can be taken for granted straight away. But no, it's it's a story that we should mention. And uh, yeah, that would be, um, that would be that. yeah between now and the end, end of the season. But we have a title race, my friend. I don't think at one time we, we thought we would, but this one looks like it could go right down to the wire. Let's move it to a team who were under pressure, mate. Four straight defeats, um, terrible run of form. Everton at home to Newcastle. Newcastle going in the opposite direction under Eddie Howe. Frank, under some spotlight and some pressure to, to get a result. And his team did, mate. There was 10 men on the pitch. They had the crowd behind them like noise. I've not heard a good for some time. An atmosphere that was electric. And a great late goal from Alex Awobi. Now his team goal that... Just at times, Rob, you go, this Premier League, you just never know, do you? You just never, never oh, know. God. I have no idea where to start with it. <laughs> Apart from saying that, that it's the probably the most ugly of ugly wins that you're ever going to see in a game of football. Everton fans... Beautifully will, will, ugly. Beautifully, beautifully ugly. ugly. Yeah. Everton fans, of course, will be jumping for joy as they were. I'll go back to the fans as well, Rob. I, I mean, talk about a 12th man. Talk about well, a team that's well, desperate. The 11th man could be down to 10 at that time. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, a, a, a fan that, that you looked around, everybody stood up, everybody's yeah. screaming yeah. the team. I mean, they're literally trying to help them over the line and, and do everything for them. I've, it is rare that you see that amount of... Yeah. Well, I guess it's, it's all wrapped up with anxiety, with support, with yeah. desperation. It was, yeah. There was a desperation about it. And absolutely right. Absolutely yeah. right. They had to play with desperation. Yeah. I thought Everton were awful first half, Rob. Awful. Did nothing. I hear you, Musty. And I, I don't disagree that they, they weren't great. Newcastle dominated their possession. Had good runners going from, from the field, creating chances, getting them behind. I get that. But 
there was a nervousness around the players. There's an anxiety that, that happens. And I think when you're down there, you, you can't just put in a great form. It doesn't just drop off you in, in your play. I thought it was a day for Frank and his group of players to make sure all the basics were done as best you can. Defend, pick up the corners, make no mistake. Dude, we've, I've been in that situation in, 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 in my career before, Rob, where I've gone, maybe on TV, it's not going to be very good to watch, so I'll tell you that now, but we ain't going to lose today. And if it ends up nil-nil, we take a point, we have a base to go from, and we start building from there. I just felt it was one of them days for Evan. It was more about giving, putting the brakes on somewhere and giving this, ch- this, this thing a chance to turn itself around than it was having a great performance. Because I just don't think your form changes up that easily. I just don't think the atmosphere around the football club in the manner that Everton have been was that was going to be that way. So if they had to hang in a little bit in the first half, I kind of think that's okay. And I, I didn't mind it too much. Yeah, I, I just, I guess you said that the form doesn't turn around quickly. The form, they've got to play better than that, Rob. They've got 25 points. Yeah. They're going to need another nine points to stay up, probably. Eight, maybe, maybe less if the other teams don't win, of course. But, like, 25 points isn't 30. They, they've got to play better than that. I just... But when a train is running, running, you've got to stop it before you can turn it round. You've got to stop it. And I just thought sometimes right. you've just got to get a stop. Today was a stop for me. A nil-nil at, 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 at worst gets me a point. Stops a lot, and now I've got something to build on. Yeah, I'll tell you what though, Rob. I'll tell you who, mm. who I thought had a material impact was Anthony Gordon. Talk about a player that I thought elevated the whole place when the team was struggling for quality, struggling for yeah. any kind of rhythm with the ball. A couple of attempts that he had, a couple of runs that he had, some crosses that he had. I thought he was really important in terms of bringing, bringing the... the team back to be competitive more huff and puff in the second half created a lot more had more opportunities in the final third to do something um and we're looking better just mm. before the main incident mm-hmm. of the game rob where alan yeah. obviously uh makes a, a rash ch- challenge a referee gives a yellow card and yeah. vr gets involved mm. and thought it was a red porson yeah. then goes to the side he sees it again and thinks it's a red yeah um, crazy, okay yeah. so uh, so my my opinion is I thought the yellow was was fine. It yeah. wasn't high in the on the leg. It wasn't with his studs up. Yes, it was excessive force, and yes, it was. He kind of left the ground, obviously, to lunge in. But I thought, I just thought it was the it was the yellow side of a red rob for me. And I think you know the, the reaction of people that we've seen and stuff. Some think it some think it was a a reckless mm. um, endangered the safety, and some don't. I'm on the I think I think referees, Rob, when they first get a look at it, I, mean, I think Porson got a good look at it. Yeah, kind of yeah. consent, consent kind of from like the, right. feels yeah. like it was right, and I thought the yellow yeah. was fine. What what are you? It was interesting, about? man. I agree, and and sometimes you see them, Rob, and you see the speed, and you see the trip, and you see, and I think that's a bit naughty, but it's yellow. It's not a studs where it's gone through, or you you, you can sometimes yeah. see a lunge or a bit more force going in. I didn't think it was that. Now. It was interesting because I heard on, on the one of the commentators said the referee's been asked to go over it and look at it at real speed, which I thought was an interesting addition. Whether they thought it looked worse at real speed, because actually at real speed it looked more of a bit of a hard challenge, trippy thing. But it, the more you slow it down and freeze, and people saying, well, if his leg was down, yeah, he could have yeah. done what he could have done. I get that yeah. and I get it. But there's a difference, Rob, and I just felt like you. It was more yellow. I thought he got it right. I was surprised that he that he was called over, and then when he went over, we don't know what what conversation to go. We don't know what pressures they're on. But I didn't I didn't think it, it, it was it needed warranting upgrade. Was it clear and obvious yeah. error, Rob? Was it clear and obvious? Yeah, yeah obvious exactly. Error? I mean, you've basically got what said. Have you realised you've missed this? And he's caught him here, or he's done that? Yes, it's not. It's not a great challenge. And listen, of course, in some circumstances, people can argue, well, it fits all this agenda of the, of the recklessness, of the endangering the safety, et cetera, et cetera, uh, and the force. But come on. It, it, to me, it's a yellow card, Rob. That's, that was, you mm-hmm. know, and, and I thought the referee got it right. It looks so. bad, right? And, and, and the, 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 the cynical nature of it, it yeah, makes it, makes it look, and what is it? Even worse. He's lunged yeah. in. Yeah, it looks awful. 
it's a terrible tackle that we don't really want to see in the in the game. No, no. That, that granted, but it yeah. was just kind of it, it was such just... a game of with such things at stake. You've got to be sure if you're giving him a red. You've got to be sure yeah. if you're upgrading because that could have had a you know a big impact on on the outcome. Um, mm. And I'm sure maybe Newcastle fans would say, well, St. Maximin could have broke his leg, and that I get that. And I would, mm. you know, I'm, I'm one of the first to, to say I don't want to see tackles like that. But I didn't feel that this one was no. on 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 the, the the wrong wrong side as the referee did. But all that said, Mister Musco, <laughs> it didn't matter. Your, your criticisms of maybe the team not playing very well, they almost found a little something as ten men. The, the crowd got with them again, as you say, eleventh mm. man maybe because they down they down one. They kept mm. going. It was a beautifully constructed goal. It's a lovely finish. And the scenes at the end, Rob, were, again, like hairs on the back of neck stuff. I mean, they're saying they've got a new stadium. They won't need to take the roof off of days like that because they blew off. And, I mean, it was incredible again, just seeing those Everton fans and guys hugging and people. I mean, sometimes we, we, we forget how big football is in people's lives. We, we don't, we, 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 you know, we work in it, we've been in it, we've been very fortunate, but... The people who go turn up every for Everton to get relegated. I know, I know. It's, and it's unthinkable. It is unthinkable. Yeah. And rightly so, they are incredibly worried and nervous about it. Mm. Rightly so, because they're still banging trouble, but they're still in trouble. I mean, like like you said, the momentum that that should give them will obviously yeah. help. Yeah. I think on the game, Rob, when when you see the scenes and what it meant to everybody, that that's going to be a memorable game of football for Everton yeah, for sure. many years yeah. to come. That'll yeah. be one that the people mm. will, will people talk about. At, yeah, talk about it. Alex Awobi, who, who who hasn't always been the favourite player of that football club over the years, and his fee mm. was high, and maybe he hasn't produced what was expected of him. But yeah. for him to go through and score that goal, I thought he froze a little bit. I thought his celebration was like, <laughs> God, I, I don't know. I just thought he was. I, I didn't really believe he believed himself that he'd scored. But they, I just thought it was an incredibly memorable, powerful game of football. Mm. Ugly mm. as anything, but who cares? They don't, of course, yeah, they don't yeah. care right oh. now. And it gives I mean, them the, the just the shots of Frank, Rob. Rob. Yeah, just the shots of Frank on the side of the pitch, a very calm, quite calculated guy, calls his emotions generally, and, and you know, this great player. I mean, that's probably as big a moment for him in his, his career as some of these great goals and great moments he's had as a player at Chelsea. and what he did at job, and he, you know, when he went back, that, that was huge for him today. Yeah. Hey, did you? So, did I read that? Like again, we're we're, we're recording just after the game. I think he's yeah. broke his hand, by the way, in the celebration. I, I, <laughs> I thought I read he's broke his hand, Frank Lampard, in the celebrating. So we'll get confirmation of that, you know, maybe. And next time we see him at the weekend, yeah. I'll have a big old pop. Him, <laughs> but apparently, yeah. he broke his hand in the celebration. So. Yeah, I mean, well done, Everton. Well, talk mm, about yeah. find a way to win in an incredibly difficult. But I think you know the memorable part will be, for me, the fans and the noise, yeah, and the way they carried. They they did their best. It to, wouldn't to allow them to, to not to not no. win lose that game today. Yeah. It was almost like you we're we're not allowing you to do that. Yeah, super Power fans, super Power super fans. superb. Yeah, let, so. let, let's. Let's move it to one of the big stories of the week, my friend. Um, <clears throat> as ever, always in the news, Manchester United. Off the back of a 3-2 win against Spurs, Ronaldo doing Ronaldo things and getting a hat-trick. The next big game in line then was Atletico Madrid doing 1-1 from the first leg in the Champions League. Huge game. Um, only chance of silverware United going to have. So, you know, much hope that... Having got the goal away from home, uh, Langer with the goal away from home, they could get the, the business done at Old Trafford, get themselves into quarterfinals, and maybe start returning some of that glory. Didn't go to plan. Mm. No, it didn't. I mean, I, I think, you know, look at the start of the game, Rob. Bright, as we've seen yeah. many times. Yeah. Good atmosphere. Fans are great. Atmosphere. Great. Yeah. It's a great start. It's a, it's a fast start. Mm. Um, you know, you know what Atletico Madrid are going to do. You know what they're going to do. Yeah. And they did it. Yeah. Super organised, defensive, deep, mm. um, and it just became a realization that their attacks just fizzled out. Rob Ronaldo was all over; he was very played very wide. He kept putting yeah, on the left hand side. Left in there, the yeah, off. I guess to be on uh, Stefan Savic, the, the mm. former City centre back, was on that side. But it's just as the game wore on, you, you just everything that people have been saying about Man United. Um, and the situation right now just came to kind of fruition. Yeah. 
Attacking yeah. wise, not not a great deal. Lang had a couple of opportunities early. Rob where early on, play. yeah, good save from Earl Black, wasn't it? Well, the, hitting, but right close yeah. to the time the goal. Is, For the yeah. most part, the attacks fizzled out, and there wasn't a lot of quality in the final third. Pogba, of course, is on the bench, yeah. um, and it, and it, 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 everybody's like not surprised, which which is right. It's not a good Manchester United team. It all goes forward about who's the next manager. And Ralph Ragnick's not gonna, apparently not going to have any say in the next manager, which is not a surprise. Um, but the, 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 sad, the sad reaction feeling from myself, as many others I've read, this is just the way it is at United right now. And, you know, we all go back to the, the ownership and the mm. directors and all that stuff. But that really is where you keep ending going back to. There might be moments of, of excitement or of quality and this is looking better and the team are looking more compact and they're trying to win the ball back and they're trying different systems Ragnick and he's trying his best to get and and all that yeah but I'm afraid there's certain days where no this is kind of where we're at and I feel like Man United right now are, are at that point they're struggling for a top four spot they're out of European competition they've got interim manager that you know the club's talking about who finding the next manager and Ralph's not been involved in that process. It's a mess, Rob, isn't it? It's a mess. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Um, I think at the weekend we were working, I said four big days for United and they played Tottenham team that are not quite where Conte wants, but you know, we, we, we've seen signs of what they can do. And I thought, Rob, as I was watching the game, we were trying to make a few minutes, I thought Atleti are a better version of Spurs, but maybe not quite as good an attack, but they can defend properly, Rob. They've got yeah, good they numbers. Can. They've got experience. They deep. They know what they're doing. They're focused. They're men. They know how to play the game. All those things do, sort of nullified United's threat. And my, I thought this was like, and, and I'm probably echoing your point, it was like a realisation that Manchester United, Rob, are not feared in, in English football. So they're certainly, at the moment, not feared in your big European football. We're talking about quarterfinals now, the big competition. United are not feared anymore like these two. And I kind of, my headline was mediocre Manchester. The yeah. mediocre, it's, it's got to mediocrity all over the football club. I'm going to go through the team, Rob, just very quickly. And, and, and the goalkeeper, as is, is has been in decent form. You've got two average fullbacks, Rob, not great yeah, defenders, yeah, not yeah, great yeah. going forward. We did, we've done yeah. this before, Rob, haven't we? We've, we've done, done this before. Back there, but we've got two, two midfield players who are decent, hard working, holding midfield players, can't create. The only creative force is Bruno Fernandes in the team. You've got wide players, some of them young players, still le learning the game now. But they haven't got no threat there, Rob. They, they can't get in behind. They're not great crosses of the ball. You've got a great goal scorer in Ronaldo who's going to have moments but can't be relied on. And the rest, there's no productivity. Your Rashford's and got, haven't delivered the goals. So it's a mediocre team. And, and with a mediocre team, I don't know why we keep expecting to, to think yeah. there'll be little peaks. There'll be little peaks. Yeah. But generally, you've got an own, you've got an interim manager who, in some respects, has been not set up, set up for success. Is there as a bit of a, you know, all the noises coming out, all the talk about players, all the things about that? It, I'm, it just it, the whole football club, Rob, and, and and off the back of it, there was two incidents that happened yesterday. We'll talk first about the poor Pogba and his family because because this is important, and, it, and it's something that's happening too much in the game. While he was at the game, I think his, his, his wife was at the game, his children were sleeping and he got burgled. I mean, that, mm. I mean, how people can know that, that, that the guy's doing his job and, and he's away from his home and his kids are... And, and he so talked about... Oh, that, I mean, you don't, you don't even think about that. And then there was an incident, Rob, with Marcus Rashford, who's been one of their own, been at the football club since seven years of age in the academy, not been having a good time with football, you know, to his, his words, not mine. Um... But there was a little bit of criticism as he walked out after the game and apparently he, he's had a little bit of confrontation with a fan and he had to be stopped by security and he said that, you know, it's not a good look on him, but he, he didn't abuse anyone, he didn't raise his middle finger. And and it's kind of sort of symptomatic of the football club at the moment, Rob, that mm. it's not quite right. No, and just on that uh, Rashford thing, Rob, I don't know whether you saw the, uh, the video um, the actually former Arsenal striker Ian Wright put out, and there's bad language in it, yeah. but it, it, oh, it was a no. yeah. I, well, I'd urge people to go and look at. I mean, well, mm. again, if you can, if it's bad language in it, but he's yeah. Ian Wright's basically saying, you know, players get hammered, get abused. 
why should he have to come out and apologize? Like, you know, what, 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 it, 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 players get, you know, they have to be so squeaky clean in their reaction stuff, and they're human beings. And it, yeah. anyway, it was, a, it was a, I thought it was a really powerful kind of clip from Ian Wright, who, of course, is a legend as a striker in the Premier League. Yeah. We both played against him, and mm -hmm. it actually wrecked my shoulder. Ian Wright, but anyway, uh, great guy, great broadcaster. I thought yeah. that was an interesting thing. Just, just back on Rob. Remember, I mentioned in the Arsenal chat about those two positions. Now, yeah. and I'm not sure it's a great analogy, Rob, but I'm going to say I'm going to talk about it anyway. Arsenal were in a mess, and there was mm. no trust in the Cronkies as owners. Yeah, you know, similar situation now to Manchester United, right? Bad owner that, that, that yeah. well, whether he's they spent a lot of money at the club, but yeah. but. The fans will don't particularly are enamoured by the owners, the distance and the whatever. Mm. All I would say is <clears throat> if you make the right hires in those two positions for Arsenal, and again, Arsenal aren't there yet, they're not they're not kind of mm. where they want to be, but but I, I'm just trying to make an analogy of a team that was in a mess, of owners that were not trusted, they made two good hires, Edu mm. and Mikel Teta. And that's what you need on the football side. You need the two parts to get recruitment right, to coach right. And, and filter out the, the rubbish and things that you don't want. Bring in the good mm. players, develop the young players. Those two positions. If if Man United, and they've gone through tons of managers, Rob, so one side of it, some of those managers have been some that, that might have been the right on that side of it, the head coaching side. But yeah. the other side, the recruitment, mm. the director of football, Ed Woodward, that side has not been there. So you've had mm. some good managers. Unless you get two parts working together with the, with the youth academy, bringing new stuff as well, then, then it's possible. I'm saying it's possible, but you've got mm. to make the right ties in those positions. Man United must have, you know, they, they, they should go for top in class in, in both director mm. of football and yeah. the head coach, and it can work. And, and until you get both positions right, you're going to continue to have oh. this little bit of a mm. different manager. I mean, they're not all bad managers at United about over the last yeah. whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you know, United have got a bad structure, is, is, is half the problem. So, whoever goes in, the, the bad structure, and you say about those two guys, it's a good, it's good analogy because also you've got to remember, you know, the similarities go back to both have come through the times with Sir Alex and, and Arsenal with, with, with Arsenal, where that was the that was the, the sweetest time in, in the club's history, and they've had that. And since then, every, no one can kind of find anything that's anywhere near now. What's really interesting with the Arteta one is, Rob, he's had to go to a little bit where there's people, oh, is he the right one? Oh, he doesn't look, oh, he's just like, but, you know. And, and you know, I, I wrote the same thing. that This doesn't change. The mediocrity doesn't change at United till they decide who's the guy. Who's the guy? And you say, who's the, who's the support and the structure behind him? Yeah, and when you the get the guy... Inside, Rob. Yeah, it, 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 it's just as important. But when you get yeah. the guy, Rob, support him. First of all, be patient with him. Find some finance and let him build success. And that might not be one year. That might not be two years. Manchester United have got to start thinking in a five-year plan. Because, by the way, you when you see Liverpool, when you see Manchester City, they're nowhere near. Nowhere near. They finished off right. last season 12 points behind Man City. And people say, well, they were second. They were second by a country mile. And, a, and, and a, a, that gap's grown bigger since the start of this season. Le, le, you just mentioned the two clubs. Michael Edwards, mm. Jurgen Klopp. Recruitment, yeah. coach. Yeah. Yeah. Chigi Bagiristein from Barcelona. Pep Guardiola. So you've got, you got the, the football recruitment side mm. and the manager. They've got their... And, and again, Arsenal look like they're going to finish top four. They've got a way to go, but they got they've found... For now, anyway, two great yeah. people that's done good work. So until United get both bits, but they're two great examples, Rob. You just brought up yeah. Man City and Liverpool. Yeah. They've got brilliant coaches with brilliant recruitment. And and unless two of them are in, in place, it's gonna be difficult. But yeah, so but that was the, the kind of realization of, of, of that game. Yeah. Right. That's where Man United are right now. And it's it, I'm sure it's incredibly frustrating for the fans of the club that just want them mm. to be on the right path, Rob, with some excitement and some yeah. Continuity, you know, it looks like Ralph Redick is going to get kicked to the side. He won't mm. be consulted. I knew this was going to happen. I said, Yeah, start. absolutely. It was going to happen. Yeah. And, and there might be yeah. the slight worrying thing for United fans, or maybe it's, there might be a few more dark days to come on before they get to the side. But you say they're going to have to make some big calls. And I, I was thinking this summer, this next appointment, Rob, is as big a decision as they've made in a long time. It is, mate. I'm telling you. Well, they it's, get it's, 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 
Two wrong. sides wrong. There's got to be the Sorry. two sides of it. The two sides of it. There's no point of hiring a manager. Pochettino no, I'm comes saying, in. I'm, I'm talking saying, about the hires, plural, the yeah, hires, right, whatever right. that is, whoever they are. But they're going to work together as a team. But I'm saying those people that come in, this has got to be the one that you go with now. Because yeah, we're talking stay with. 10 years since they last won. In, in another year, it's 10 yeah. years since they last won a title. Yeah. There's a group of kids who are growing up have never seen United win a title. Don't quite don't know what we're talking about. This great team, great team, mm. and that's where they got to get to. Yeah, um, that's where they got to get to. Yeah. But uh, you know, I'm afraid maybe a few, a few more rainy days before the rainbow comes to for Man United. But as you say, got to make some big tough decisions in the summer mm. to get the manager and that recruitment side right if they're going to start challenging back to top four. Let's see them. Change our, our tune a little bit to Champions League. Uh, let's just go to Chelsea. We're away at Lyon. Um, looking to, I think, put off field um, activity to one side and, and concentrate on the football, which Thomas Tuchel done a really good job of, of doing. His team go uh, clear and win 2-1. Uh, Pulisic gets a really nice goal. Lovely play and, and, and finishes across the goalkeeper. And after Laqueta comes up with, with, with a yeah. second goal, the captain... Um, I just think credit for again, and, and we've talked a lot about Tuchel, but just the, this guy just continues to affect the football club in, in the best way that he can and keep everybody focused on the football, really. And they're into the it, quarterfinals. Yeah. I mean, it's just good work. I mean, the, the atmosphere there was you know, people like think, mm. what, think whatever they will about Lil, it was pretty hot, you know, yeah. it was pretty hot. Sure, they yeah. scored a goal. And uh, I, I like kind of Pulisic playing a little high. It was almost like a striker, Rob. It was like a second yeah, striker. Uh, took his goal really, really well. He's really starting to uh, bring the consistency that I've yeah. always talked about with him. We know he's capable of doing great moments. And we're seeing it quite regularly now where he's, mm. he's, he's, his end product's getting very good. I mean, since yeah. all this stuff happened with Chelsea, Rob, the team have been pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I know. Whatever, <laughs> whatever, you know, whatever. Yeah, because they weren't in good form before, were they? It was, it was a bit patchy. No, no. And they found they found some good results, mm. maybe a little bit of, um, you know, what's the galvan? Maybe they're a little bit yeah. galvanised from all the trouble that's going on. We know the managers are really, really good motivated yeah, guys smart siege mentality thing isn't it like let's like yeah. pull it all together and, and you know let's through. stick to the football but it's team, yeah, it's team 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 Tuchel, Tuchel was talking Rob after so and you just said you know I want us to become one of the feared teams in Europe you know he wants to build something that people go oh we don't want Chelsea in the quarterfinals they are holders obviously club winners as well and um, you know I'm sure he's just going to keep his focus on the football and, and keep doing what he does with his team and you know Great respect for him and how how he conducts himself and how he focuses on his football and, and manages to keep things going because it must be difficult on a day to day basis just sort of being at, at Chelsea at the moment. Um, all kind it, of talks it about. Looks right. It looks like the uh, yeah, and there's, aren't we going to get some news? You're, like tomorrow is yeah, the, 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 Friday was supposed to be the day of the proposals and they talk about a joint a consortium now going in together and putting money and. Uh, Gianluca Vialli's name has been mentioned, Seth Coe's so, name has been mentioned. So, yeah, um, well, well, we'll have to wait and see, obviously, how, how that all, all plays out. And obviously, the government will have a role in that. But Thomas Tuchel doing his job with the players on the pitch. So, that leaves us in Champions League, mate, quarterfinals. Um, Hang on a minute. There's one There's one. One little thing to add. Chelsea have been good in cup competitions, but they face the big, the big giant killers, Middlesbrough, on Saturday, FA Cup. I made that how can, crazy. How can we be talking Champions League quarterfinals, the, the big teams across Europe and Middlesbrough. <laughs> well, we just took it's, it's a general Chelsea conversation. They've been pretty good, but they've got the biggest test they've got all season going to Middlesbrough. Oh, they've already been you beat Man United like, because you beat Spurs. Right. So, like, it's another, they're, they're not taking any fans. They have this, obviously, the, 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 the crazy Chelsea statement about should yeah, there be no, totally should there be a buying closed doors in sport yeah, and integrity, yeah. which got so hammered part, down very quickly? So part, mm -hmm. so part, yeah. yeah. So anyway, yeah. But uh, no, well done, Chelsea. What's these Middlesbrough? Let's talk about that. We'll, we'll have a chat about that on uh, Sunday's podcast when we right. look back at a few of the FA Cup games, see if your borough have uh, made it through oh. past the mighty Chelsea. Um, is it the other side, isn't it, as well? Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. No Chelsea been, fans. I thought you'd been flying back for that one, mate, to make sure you... Yeah, we owe, we owe Chelsea. Chelsea beat us. When I played, they beat oh, us yeah, in, in the final, didn't they? That was like the early seven. goal when... I think he scored, didn't he? Mateo, yeah, Mateo. Really? It was good. It's got like 40-odd seconds or something. And they beat us the League Cup final after that. So, 
you know, I'm kind of rooting for Middlesbrough in, in this cup game of the weekend. That's not like so that's that's not that's not that's not that's that. I know. Well, I mean, just a couple of other results. Yeah, Juventus got beat three 0 by Villarreal. I assume I am is Villarreal, so very advanced four one and I'd be getting to quarters finals. And Ajax got beat one 0 by Benfica, which meant Benfica advanced three two and I get so a couple of shocks there. So that leaves us Chelsea, Liverpool, Man City, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Benfica, Villarreal, and Atletico Madrid in the draw that I believe is I think that's tomorrow as well, isn't it? What is the draw tomorrow? Yeah. I think, I think it is. Yeah. Final draw, yeah. So the game we maybe report on that on Sunday's podcast. A couple of other Premier League games, rearranged games this week. Um Harry Kane doing Harry Kane things, getting back to the goals. Becomes the all-time leader in away goals now. I think it's taken the, the record uh, from Wayne Rooney. Um, 95 goals in 130 matches, all-time Premier League leader in away goals. He's climbing that ladder, mate. I think he's now gone above Frank Lampard, fifth all-time. Um, if he stays in England, he's got a chance, hasn't he? The 260 of, um, of Alan Shearer. I mean, five, se- five seasons of... When he yeah, is uh, yeah, yeah, five, yeah, five seasons. Of, yeah, yeah, I mean, if he stays in the league and, and he's playing for a for a good side, yeah, he's got a chance of it. I mean, it feels right, doesn't it, when you watch him play and the consistency mm. and the type of goals that he scores? It feels right that he should be in the upper echelons now. And and such a, a such a change to what we saw first of all yeah, with him and yeah. Nuno Espirito mm. Santo as coaching. And after the, the 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 you know he wouldn't go to wasn't allowed to go to Man City. I mean, yeah. I think everybody. Us included, Rob thought that he'd get back to his best, and it, yeah. and it did take a lot of time. But he really is more time, yeah. he's, in, he's in great shape now. Lovely finish with his left foot in that post, slots it away. Mm-hmm. And Spurs, uh, you know, continue to, to kind of chisel away, yeah, try and hit that yeah. top four. They've got a chance, yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah, there's not much between them and, and Arsenal now, who, who are probably the two favorites, I would think, maybe for, for that fourth spot. Uh, just a couple of other mentions as well, mate. West Ham United in the Europa League have been a bit of a story this, this season. They've won 2-0 today against uh, Sevilla. Suchak and Yomelenko gain um, yeah. sure emotional scenes at the London Stadium and get themselves past Sevilla. You know how good they have been in this com- competition. Advanced 2-1 and aggregate get into the quarter. So, you know, this, you know, many people saying, oh, West Ham in the Europa, oh, there's no way they can go on. The squad's not deep enough. But David Moore is just, mate, continues, mate, to be consistent, continues to show you what, you know, structure and, 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 and a way of playing that suits your players. Um, great win. Great to see them in that stage of competition. And, you know, some, some good nights, some great European nights at London Stadium is what kind of builds that spirit that they, they maybe had from the Upton Park days. Yeah, I, I remember I, I, I read a preview and, and basically saying that West Ham going away in Sevilla that that then any you know any low scoring defeat they still fancy their chances back at London Stadium. Yeah. That's exactly how it panned out. I mean, Andrei Yarmolenko to score the winning goal late in the game, mm. really late in the game, he thought it was going to go to penalty kicks. is is pretty amazing the impact that oh, he's yeah. had, Rob, yeah. from from not doing, day, I mean, yeah. not, not really being involved in the team a lot. He's always off the bench and and. Yeah. and you know, maybe that's a good way it's going to continue. But wow, for him to score again mm-hmm. so soon after the one uh, last time was, was pretty special. And well done, like well done, um, yeah. well done Europa David League for West Ham. And, and why yeah. not? Why can't they go the whole way? Absolutely. And just remember, on um, Sunday, twelve thirty PM Eastern Time on USA Network, Spurs versus West Ham, uh, London Derby, two teams who uh, got a bit of history uh, between themselves. So. Just now, and obviously West Ham outside chances now at, at, at top four, but if they go and beat Spurs at the UAL Stadium, then anything's on. And you just never know with David Moyes' team because he, we come, we can, despite having played many of the same players, they continue to uh, keep getting results. So big game there on Sunday. And just a, a little note on the Europa Conference League. It was the competition that Brendan Rodgers didn't know that much about when he said he was in it, but they, they're taking it seriously. Um, Bit of a story tonight, Wesley Fofana, who's back, Rob, after the red break, and then they apparently had COVID a couple of weeks ago, so couldn't play, but scores a goal today and then runs off the length of the pitch, goes over to Brendan, gives him a big hug, and obviously, you know, just shows that relationship. And Brendan's talked about how important Fofana has been and, and what a miss he's been. So, yeah, ju- yeah just a little sign of, um, of, of maybe him coming back might just be a better end to the season for Leicester than, than we've seen for a while. Yeah, I mean, Wesley Fofana back for Leicester is 
is a big deal. You know, I think it's the first match since May. Um, I mean, uh, you know, Leicester fans have, have had a, a nightmare with their centre backs. Johnny Evans, I yeah. think, is still out. West Ham has been up such a long time. Quick, really good player. Yeah, mm. and fair play to Leicester. You know, they, again, I, they they progress to the next round. The yeah. winner of this competition does automatically qualify oh, yeah. for the, the yeah. and the season they're having domestically in the league, Leicester. That's a big mm. deal. So. You know, invested a few people, didn't he, at the weekend, which was a bit interesting. One, it was like the Tielemans and one or two didn't didn't start, did he? And he sort of said maybe, you know, he's decided to put his eggs in this basket. Yeah, it's a way to go. And they got a chance. Mm. They got a chance of winning this competition. Listen, mate, I've had enough of you on St. Patrick's Day, uh, Thursday, March 17th. So in a week when United bowl out of Europe, City draw a red blank and Liverpool take advantage to lead cut the lead to one point at the top of the table and Everton stopped the rot in well incredible scenes at Goodison Park with the world be getting a late goal and Everton getting all three points we'll be back on Sunday that's March the 20th when we we'll look back at some very important games in the Premier League a Spurs West Ham game 12 here to get me some time on USA and we'll look from the headlines from the FA Cup ties where Robbie Musters Middlesbrough are going to beat Chelsea and get themselves in the same finals of the FA Cup <coughs> But for now, I'm Earl. He's mostly together with the two Robbies. Thanks for watching and listening. Be safe, stay healthy. It's a good night from me. And it's a good night from him. Good night. Good night. I'm Rebecca Lowe, studio host for NBC's coverage of the Premier League. Don't forget to hit subscribe to watch highlights all season long and be sure to tune in for Premier League mornings every weekend at 7am Eastern. And for even more content, head over to Peacock where we've got live games, original series and a dedicated round-the-clock Premier League channel featuring studio shows, classic matches and much more.